So, can you see the slide? Yeah, we can see the slide and hear you well. Good. Uh, so, um, Eliva, I am going to present you the SDR Data Right project. It consists of um, analy analyzing the data right of some ETUS boards. We were two engineers working on it, Kevin, Julie, and I. The goal was to measure the maximal data right that we can achieve with test board and compare the result with the data sheets. And if there is any difference that we can see, evaluate why there was difference to an analysis and find the bottlenecks. To measure the, the data right, we have developed a little application using U, UHD library. Um, so the application allows to send the data to the board and then the board will send them further via radio. And also to configure some parameter of the board as the frequency, but what interesting us the most was the data rate. And to find the maximal data rate, what we have done is to start with a very high data rate and then slowly decrease it until we have no more loss of data during five minutes. So we start with the, so just one more point, we tested two ETUS board, the B210 and the E310. Uh, we choose test two board because as you will see uh, later on, they are quite different in the architecture. So the B210 first um, need to be connected to a computer using USB 3. And then uh, the, when the board receive it, it will process a bit the data through FPGA and then send them to radio with the AD. The data sheet um, advertised for 56 mega samples per second. But when we test it at first, we only achieved 32 mega samples per second. So then the goal was to find where was the problem in, in this flow of data. What we wanted to do is to isolate some part of the board to test it separately. So the, the Cypress firmware normally has a DMA that take the data from the USB 3 and send them to the FPGA. We modify this such that the DMA will work in a look back mode. So it will send the data back to the computer. And when we measure the data rate, we find 32 mega samples per second. So it's where the bottleneck was. Now the question was, is the bottleneck due to the B210 drivers or to the computer? We changed the USB on the computer to have a 3.1. And that is, when we do that, we were able to achieve 56 mega samples per second as advertising the ETUS data sheet. Then we worked on the ETUS E310. So the architecture is different because this board uh, has a ARM processor on it. Actually it has two processors. So it can be Use without a computer in a standalone mode. The UHT application runs directly on the board. And uh, the data sheet of this board says that we can send the data at 2 mega samples per second. But it's a bit strange because if we look at all the links, all the data rate of all the links, the, the bottleneck is the AD because it has 40 megahertz. So it means we should be able to send the data at 40 megahertz if we use the board in standalone. Or if we want to send the data to a computer, we can also connect a computer to it via uh, Ethernet port. But then the maximal data rate should be 25 mega samples per second. But um, the ETUS data sheet said the maximal is 10 mega samples per second we were able to achieve this data rate, but um, we were a bit curious to see where were the problems. So the, the 
first issue is on the link between the FPGA and the AD because they said it could run at 64 mega sample per second. So it's true, but by default, uh, it just run at 10 mega sample per second. And it's why we observed only 10 mega sample per second. This is a known issue, and um, during a presentation at a GNU radio conference, there was a solution proposed. The, the solution actually enables some DMA between the FPGA and the AD, and um, they were able to achieve the 40 mega sample per second in a standalone mode. But because this was already a known issue, we as we have more focused on the Ethernet part. So what we did is also try to isolate the Ethernet communication. So we were not actually playing data through all the e 310 flows. We were only sending to the processor and then we, we were not using the data. And uh, we use iperf 3 to measure the Ethernet performance. Both, we try both the ETUs in a client um, configuration or a server configuration, but we were not able to achieve the 25 mega sample per second. And what we observed is that the CPUs on the ETUs E310 were overloading. They were, they were doing a lot of work to send the data to Ethernet or also response to IRQ when the data are coming from the Ethernet. And it's why we were not able to, to increase the rate too much because the, the CPU were just overloading and losing data. And it's something we observe because there is actually no Ethernet DMA, so the processors has to do all the work of transferring. So to increase this rate, there was no solution, no easy solution, but uh, we were trying to find other solution. And one idea was to compress the data that we are sending to the processor. We can do that because the AD has only 12 bits of precision, but because processor can only work with half word of or words, has 16 bits of data. There is too much data for the precision, so we could compress them without loss of precision. But uh, we, we had not the time to go much further in this investigation, so we, we let it at uh, open uh, question. So thank you for listening. I don't know if you have any questions. Thank you, Aliyaba, for guiding us through everything you explored on the data rate uh, subactivity. Let's see if there are any questions uh, here on the chat or directly if someone would like to ask a question. Um, can I? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so, okay. yeah, thank you. Uh, so uh, regarding the compression, when I was using RCLSDR stick, they were publishing eight bits of data and I was compressing it uh, on the fly, it was very, very effective. So uh, if you compress only, well, at 8-bit resolution, that it should be a lot of savings. So maybe worth trying 12 bits, not much uh, difference from 8 bits. Yeah. And also an idea was to use uh, the Neon assembly um, um, to to manipulate um, 128 bits at one time with one instruction, so maybe this was also a possibility to, to save CPU load. Yeah. I see there is a, a, a question in the chat. It was a UDP hyperf string. Okay. Yeah. I have a question if there is a time. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
Yeah, uh, uh, thanks for the presentation. Very good presentation. Um, I have actually uh, two uh, small questions. One is follow up on the previous one. Um, if you have tried uh, different bit uh, depth for per sample, and uh, also what is the how many bits per sample were, were tried? Because I think the reported results are in samples per second, but it would be interesting as well to see the megabits per second. Uh, the second part of the question. According to your observation, what would be the best method uh, to communicate with the um, e E310 uh, ethos? Thanks. So, uh, first, um, the data was in IQ um, form and it was 16 bit for I and 16 bit for Q. So, when I am talking about mega sample per second, it's actually 32 bits for one sample. And the second question, um, so for the E310, I'm, I'm not sure because there is a um, three way to communicate, is the SD card, USB 2 or Ethernet. Is, is it your question or? Yes, yeah, that's correct. So what, what do you recommend the best method to um, extract uh, data? So we're talking about um, uh, off board processing. So outside the, um, mm. the, uh, the the module itself. So processing on FSM MATLAB or using um, the GNU radio, what is the best way to communicate? Do you, do you suggest, for example, storing things on an SD card and you know extracting them later? Or do you think um, we can achieve real time using, um, because this also supports up to gigabit per second. Uh, so they have 10 and 100 and 1000 megabits per second. Or do you, do you see any or, or through the USB? So um, I tested the um, SD card, but uh, very quickly and I only achieved like two mega sample per second, but there may be a bit more to do because maybe it was just my SD card was too slow or maybe some update of, on the SD driver could help to go a bit further. So for me, writing to uh, the file system is not a very good option with this light observation, but um, as I said, maybe a bit more investigation need to be done. And um, I didn't test the USB two, but the and and the Ethernet give quite good results. I think eighteen um, mega sample per second, because uh, at first they only said the, the board is able to ten mega sample per second, so. At this point, we, we were higher, so I think it's quite good communication way. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no other questions, I'd like to thank Eleva for the presentation and move on to our next presenter, which is Elias Daradimos with the activity FPGA tool change. So, Elias, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, let me share the 